Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. We're talking about homelessness and some of the solutions here. Spark City attorney Wes Duncan and Grant Denton, who's the founder and executive director of the Karma Box Project. Here for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Gear up for the 105th Reno Rodeo at the Double R Marketplace and experience the biggest little shopping adventure in the West. With over 100 vendors, you'll find everything from Western attire to home decor to tasty treats. Open every day during the Reno Rodeo at the Livestock Event Center Indoor Arena in South Exhibit Hall. The Double R Marketplace, Thursday, June 20th through Saturday, June 29th. Plus, shop online anytime at renorodeo.com for Reno Rodeo merchandise. Story County is leading Nevada. Home of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, Google, Tesla, Panasonic, and other world-leading companies. Story County provides thousands of tech, advanced manufacturing, and logistics careers for Nevadans. We're diversifying and driving Nevada's economy and generating millions in tax revenue and billions in economic activity across Northern Nevada. Story County is leading Nevada's future. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low, and our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way, because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program the Spark City Attorney, Wes Duncan, and Grant Denton, founder and executive director of Karma Box Project. Pleasure to have you both here. Thank you. Uh, so let me start out with you first, Wes, because I need some explanation here. Um, there is a, uh, a case before the Supreme Court that was argued called the Grants Pass case. Um, argued but not ruled upon, correct? That's right. For those of us, including me, explain what this case is and how it applies to Nevada. So two weeks ago, the U.S. Supreme Court really took up uh, the issue of, the, the question is, can cities uh, enforce their camping ordinances? And specifically, are they able to enforce them when they don't have shelter space available? So there was a case in the Ninth Circuit called Boise v. Martin that essentially said uh, cities cannot enforce laws against the homeless, in, in examples such as camping, uh, when there isn't shelter space available. So the Supreme Court uh, took up this case. And really, it's, it's certainly going to give jurisdictions throughout the, 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 the West and also across the nation clarity on uh, are they able to enforce uh, these type of camping ordinances. Now, in the, in the city of Sparks and in Washoe County, because we have a CARES campus and an emergency shelter, um, we, of course, don't enforce the law uh, if there isn't a shelter bed open. Uh, it just so happens that on most nights, there's somewhere between 20 to 25 beds. And so, you know, Washoe County will continue to do uh, what, what it has been doing. Um, Which is, is? Is, you know, for us in the city of Sparks, is trying to connect people compassionately to services first, always. Um, Grant is an expert in, in speaking to, you know, the situationally homeless versus the behaviorally homeless. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that in a minute. But, um, you know, certainly we're, we have a HOPE team that, that tries to connect uh, the homeless to services first. Um, in a compassionate way to try to address them uh, where, there's at, where, there is, where they're at. I think the question for jurisdictions, though, is what do you do for people who continue to say no to the help and to the services that are offered to them? 
And so grants pass, uh, I think, is going to give us clarity uh, for jurisdictions that may not have shelter beds that are open, but they can uh, they want to enforce the law, especially when there's public health and public safety issues in their communities, especially with how dangerous camps can be. So that, that's the question really before the Supreme Court. And it's going to be nice to have clarity uh, as to, to what cities can do with their police powers uh, and also in, in trying to address homelessness within their communities. Okay, and, and, and what are some of the negative effects that you're seeing? I mean, you know, there are obvious effects um, of, of poverty in an area. Uh, when you see people at freeway intersections holding up signs or just on the corner. And, you know, the, the thing that, that bothers me to an extent, and I'll probably hear about this, is that knowing that there is so much help available uh, in this community, people like yourself and others, uh, Par Tolls, who's a good friend of this program, is uh, on your board. Um, and, you know, people are trying to resolve these issues but it seems that, that there are certain people that just don't want to get the help and they would rather stand in a corner in all kinds of weather. I can't imagine what it takes to do that. Um, and, you know, I don't want to see Reno Sparks or Las Vegas or whatever go down the same roads as places like Oakland and San Francisco where I don't want to visit anymore. Well, I mean, I'll tell you, and I'm an Iraq War veteran, and I, I see some of these American cities where you have miles and miles of encampments it looks like a war-torn country, right? So I, I, we can do better as a community. When you talk about the range of options that you have in addressing this issue, of course you have to have services. You have to have uh, you know, a shelter, a transitional shelter place. You have to have transitional programming. You have to have all the available resources to try to, to treat the underlying reason for why people are homeless. Again, there's often a broad brush that's painted with the homeless just to say, well, it's just about poverty. Well, that's a situational homeless issue where you, you are homeless by virtue of the fact that maybe you lost your job and you were evicted, and that's the only indicator as to why you're homeless. What we're talking about in these encampments and the issue that the city of Sparks is seeing is folks that are behaviorally homeless, where there's a root cause underlying issue that is causing their homelessness, whether it's a serious mental illness, whether it's drug abuse, whether it's a co-occurring disorder where they're medicating to, to, to try to deal with a, a serious mental issue, whether it's poverty. Hey, again, Iraq War veteran, you've got veterans out there that are dealing with PTSD, poverty, and then uh, all of the above, right? So just to say, I'm going to get you a house without addressing that issue, that person is going to find themselves likely homeless again. And so I think it's completely uncompassionate to just paint with a broad brush and say, oh, you just address the issue with more housing. Of course we need more housing. We need more housing for the working poor and those who find themselves situationally homeless. But the root cause and where you see in American cities like Oakland, San Francisco, LA, Seattle, Portland, you have behavioral homeless issues and there's huge public health and public safety problems just in the city of Sparks, right? We've, there's, when you enter a camp, everyone has a weapon. There are booby traps. We found uh, diseases such as MRSA in these camps. You have uh, you know, raw sewage that's being held in buckets and, and urine and bottle and needles and rotting food and all of the issues that, that, that come with that. So we can do better as a community to have to enforce the law when there's public health and public safety issues and that's what the city of Sparks is, is endeavoring to do. But we also have to, to be compassionate to say, you can't paint a broad brush with the homeless and just say they're just, you know, there's one solution that will, will, will solve this problem. Each person is homeless for a, a different reason, and you have to try to tailor those services to them. We've got partnerships with Reno Community Court, where even if you're caught in the criminal justice system, we're still trying to connect you to services to get to those root causes. I think that's the compassionate approach. But any serious proposal that, that says you can never use uh, the criminal justice system, I think just funda fundamentally misunderstands uh, the, the issue and, and, and really lacks a solution to, to try to get to, to those root causes. Okay, Grant, um, tell us about Karma Box Project and, and how this plays into it. Um, Karma Box Project was a grassroots community 
effort. We started out putting free pantry boxes around the community that uh, it was a reciprocal relationship between those who want to give and those who need. And it was uh, non-perishable food, hygiene items, things like that. In 2020, we started a, we turned it into a nonprofit where we were doing outreach around Broadhead Park, right? There was a Portland Loo that was placed there and we wanted to do outreach around that. And it was just me at first. And what we, what we learned out there um, is that you're not gonna, you're not gonna just walk up to a tent, right? And say, hey guys, you ready to change your, li- change your life? And someone be like, yeah, let me just grab my stuff. It doesn't work like that. You have to develop relationships with folks. So it took, so what we started to do was solve problems with them. You wanna, you wanna develop a good rapport with somebody, you start solving problems. And so we started uh, cleaning up trash. We started cleaning up trash in the camp and then we started giving them gift cards to help us clean up trash. And then we started to work to get people off of the streets. And then what, you've, what we found is, is that it's so, there's so many different reasons why people are on the streets. Homelessness is just a symptom of a problem, right? You, if you're homeless, something happened. What happened? How did you get here? And there's so many different ways that people get there. And we looked into the, we looked into the constants of homelessness. You looked at, uh, there, you know, you're always subject to the elements. Your things will always get stolen. Your, uh, you know, you're, you're subject to violence and you're always on someone else's property. This is what always happens when you're homeless. These are the constants. And we identify that this like puts people in a condition of fight or flight. They're always got their guard up and it's difficult to work with folks, right? There's two things you can't do at once. You can't grow and protect yourself. So if the idea is that if you want to help somebody grow out of this condition, then we have to get them in a safe place, safer place, right? And so you, and a shelter would be the way, or a safe camp, or some sort of treatment or something. It's a bad idea, you know, the, you know, the harm reduction model is that you uh, meet people where they're at. But the idea is that you don't leave them there. So you meet people where they're at, and you do the dance, right? Because it's difficult. It's difficult for somebody to change everything, you know? And so you do the dance um, to get them out. And that's what Karma Box does. We do the outreach, we work with folks in getting them into shelter, or treatment, or whatever the next uh, phase is for that person. Okay, what's your success rate? Uh, At the camp, we we got close to about 40%. Now what we consider success is uh, getting somebody permanently housed with stable income. So. And and so about 40%. Yeah. And and what's the pushback from the other 60%? Uh, Well, it depends. There's so many different reasons. Whether they're incapable, maybe they can't do it. Maybe you have your willing and able. Those are people that are easy to work with. You have your willing but unable, so those are folks that you know, unable, like they're willing to go, but they're unable because of mental health disorders or physical disorders. You have your unwilling and unable, and that's severely mentally ill, and that's, these folks are a result of the, you know, the deinstitutionalizing of America, the asylums shutting down. And then you have your able but unwilling. And this is what the ones that we're talking about now, this is what this is all about, is the people that are capable of getting out but refuse to get out. Because, uh, and again, again, yeah. I mean, it's a broad spectrum, but I mean, share if you will, you know, a couple of the reasons why. I, you know, I can, I can share why people would want to get out of this condition, because I know at some point that I wanted to get out of it. When I was on the streets, I spent nine years um, addicted to heroin and meth in, in and out of the system. And at some point I wanted to get out, but there had to be a traumatic cue for change. Something had to be a catalyst for me to want to get out. And why did I want to be there? Well, who knows? Because that was this the lifestyle that I've uh, become accustomed to. You know, we have the when it comes, and I just want to like make it when it comes to like this issue. It's not a to to gel or not to gel. It's not a to sweep or not to sweep issue. It's a how do we get somebody to the next phase, right? And it's and it comes down to also like what are we. Like, what do you do with the guy? We're not trying to figure out what we do with the people that are accepting services, right? We know what to do with those folks. What do you do with the folks that aren't accepting services? What do you do with the folks that uh, refuse to move when you ask them to move, do you know? What do you do with the folks that refuse to, to stop littering or stop? And so that's the question. That's what, what we're looking at. And you know, we, as long as there's homelessness, and I believe that it's going to, you know, if it'll always be. So you'll always have homelessness. So as long as there's homelessness, you'll always have camps. We can agree on that. What it comes down to is what we as a society are okay with. Are we okay with one tent? Are we okay with two tents? Are we okay with five tents? Are you okay with 
10 and what happens when a camp grows? Uh, well, usually what happens is somebody, somebody takes charge, right? The leader comes up and usually the leaders of the camps aren't the most vulnerable. The leaders are the folks that are dealing the drugs. The leaders are the folks that are, um, that are victimizing the rest of the group. And so how do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? And I think that's what the, the question is. It's not like, how do you deal with folks that want help? Because you have some folks saying, well, we need to provide more services. Well, sure, you can provide more services, but it doesn't mean much if people refuse to take them, right? So there's a supply and demand thing. Like if we build another shelter, an empty shelter costs exactly the same as a full shelter. So we, there has to be, um, th there has to be a drive to accept these services. And that's the problem that we're running into is how do you deal with the folks that don't want to accept services? All right, let's take a break. We'll come back much more on this very important yeah. topic after this timeout. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you, safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators, from the exotic to the everyday, trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Turn your clunker into a caddy during the Cadillac and Cash giveaways at Tamarack Casino. Weekly cash drawings including 5,000 cash and one top prize of $10,000. Win the grand prize of a Cadillac CT4 or 40,000 in cash. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Spark City Attorney Wes Duncan and Grant Denton, who's the founder and executive director of Karma Box Project. Okay, so I've got to ask you, um, how did you get into the situation you were in with heroin and meth, and how did you get yourself out? Because that is a, a remarkable achievement. So it's uh, how I got in was, you know, we'll just say that you start with that grant, grant that has job, wife, kid, house, car, and I developed a drug addiction. And I lost my job as a result of my drug addiction, and so I became Grant who loses job. Um, but if I don't address my drug addiction, which was the reason I lost my job, I'll just get another job. And I continue to do that. Just lose a job, get a job, lose a job, get a job. And then you lose wife then you lose kids, right? And then you try to find other relationships and then you lose house and you try to, now you're couch surfing, then you lose your car and all these things and before you know it, it's not like you do drugs right out of the gate and lose everything, it's, it's a progression and it's a progression of what you become okay with, you know, and you start to become okay with these things and then before you know it, you're Grant at a bus stop waiting for someone to come and get a fix for you, do you know? And so it's, it's uh, and the, the problem after that is, and the problem that we have you know, the biggest hurdle working with folks on the streets is there is a lot of drug use, you know, and, and you, you can't, you're not just gonna stop using drugs because now you have an individual that has an identity crisis. Somebody has an identity crisis. You get them off of drugs, they don't even know who they are. The, and, and if you, and so for me, it was, I had to, I um, was facing five to seven years in prison, not for drug charges, but for drug related crimes. I was burglary, robbery, all these things. And so I was facing five to seven, then I was offered um, a chance to go to drug court and rehab, and I took it. And that's, and it was a long time. I was locked up for 
about a year waiting to go to rehab, and I was, and then after that, I was on probation for another couple years, and was in a drug court program that held me accountable. Can I ask, can I ask you what what made that switch for you, where you were able to accept it rather than just going to prison, which might have been the easier decision? Well, so you look at it for logically, if uh, I can go to prison, do five to seven, and when you're living on the streets and you have nothing, uh, prison is a retirement plan. Yeah, crime pays certainly does when you come from nothing, and then you look at. Uh, um, and it's either you go to prison or you die. So in a risk assessment of being a homeless drug addict, we know these things and uh, we accept them. And, and they gave me, they offered me five to seven or they, they said you can go to rehab, but if you mess that up, you get five to seven. You know, so either way I would've got five to seven, so I thought I'd give it a shot. And that's it too. It's like, you know, folks, there's a, a, an idea that you can't force anybody to do this, but I promise you, if you make it an option, most people will lean in. And it does take time. It takes time for us to, for the cloud to clear. It takes time to us, for us to understand what our role is in how we got here. The worse my life got when I was on the streets, the worse of a parent my mom was, Do you know, because I'm not taking accountability for stuff. And it took a, it took a minute for me to realize that this might be my fault. <laughs> I might have a role in this. And so, and that's what, and so if you look at that, it wasn't a, I did it by myself. I needed a lot of help because you got the incarceration point where you start to grow. <clears throat> But then you got to go out and be an adult point. And I had to become an adult and it took years. I mean, I'd say I was about 36 before I became an adult because I started doing adult things, do you know? And so it, it took a minute. And I think the problem with what we're doing right now, the, um, so if you look at like homeless, the word homeless, if you take less out of it, then you solve the problem, home. It's not how it works. We, what we've been doing traditionally is We've been solving problems in this way. There's three ways you can solve a problem. You, you, uh, you can, you, there's uh, three, you know, you help somebody, or there's three ways you can help somebody. You help them survive, which is give them basic needs. Somebody's thirsty, you give them water, they're cold, you give them a jacket, you can help them stabilize, which is uh, you get them, if they need a home, you get them into a house, you help them get into a house. And then there's thrive. Now, if stabilize is get the house, thrive is keep the house. What we've been doing so far is we've been putting people in positions um, that they're not capable of sustaining. We're not teaching the thrive portion. So what happens is somebody gets a house, loses a house, gets a house, loses a house. Once you do that over and over again to an individual, it makes more sense to be successfully homeless than it does to suck at being housed. And so we have to look at um, our, you know, our flow of homeless services. We have to look at how can we keep teach people to keep stuff. How do we, how do, we do that? Because what happens is we condish, condition a person to, uh, you know, to want to, I'm not saying people want to be homeless, they're just good at it. Do you know? Yeah. Let's take another break. We'll come back and we'll get Wes's response to this after this time out. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Hit the open road with a truckload of cash free play in one of three luxury travel trailers during the $250,000 Travel Time Giveaways. Thousands in weekly giveaways plus $7,500 in grand prizes guaranteed. And a new travel trailer or $35,000. Now at the Carson Valley Inn. Welcome to the Winnemucca Big R. Hi, I'm John Walker. Welcome to Big R Love Lock. Hi, I'm Rich Martin. Welcome to Fallon Big R. My name is Braden. Welcome to Big R Friendly. Hi, I'm Kelly. Welcome to Big R Sparks. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the air conditioning back on today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why sweat for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your air conditioning fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. Save money and take transit. 
Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Grant Denton. He's the founder and executive director of Karma Box Project and Spark City attorney, Wes Duncan. How, how do you respond, Wes, to what Grant just said? Well, I think, I think it embodies really the, the, how nuanced, how multifaceted this uh, issue is facing cities, right? It, there isn't a one-size-fits-all approach. And as a policymaker and as a city, you have to use all of the options that are available for, for you on the table. So when you have encampments that are inherently dangerous where there's, you know, women are being highly exploited in these places, there's a terrible thing called uh, play to stay where women are being bartered for propane or for tent space or not to carry the tents. And so the rate of exploitation, the dangerousness to women, to children in those situations is high. So y you have to enforce the law and keep people safe. But a as, as addressed, we also have to uh, compassionately address what is the underlying issue that's that, that this homeless person that we're encountering who has dignity, uh, how, how do we meet them where they're at? And you have to use a, a range of different tools, I think, as, as, as Grant has shown. And that's what we're doing in the city of Sparks. We've connected 500 people to services over the last three years. The folks that we are encountering now are those ones where there's services available, but they're say, saying no. And so in those situations, if there's public health and public safety issues, you have to enforce the law. It's the compassionate thing to do, and it also keeps your community safe. And that's where we have to leave it for now, but to be continued. Thank you both very much. I really appreciate you being here. Thank and you. we'll be right back. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real, it's growing, and it needs your help. Go online to carsoncitygreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. Turn your clunker into a caddy during the Cadillac and cash giveaways at Tamarack Casino. Weekly cash drawings including 5,000 cash and one top prize of $10,000. Win the grand prize of a Cadillac CT4 or 40,000 in cash. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. Calamity, it lurks around every corner. <laughs> or not. That's why UMC Quick Care is around every corner with locations around the valley. UMC Quick Care for all your small calamities. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suites. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. Thanks for watching Nevada Newsmakers. You can catch us online 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com or you can download the podcast wherever you like to get your podcast. We'll see you on the next broadcast.